44,000 people or thereabouts, we believe, inside the Gaelic grounds right now. It's also an indication of the heat, I guess, that all of the players decided to discard the helmets while they uh, went on their parade around behind this fine body of men and women making up the Tulla Pipe Band. Great uh, town for music and for hurling, of course, Tulla. But right now, it's uh, here in the Gaelic grounds, which is packed to capacity. It's uh, a ground which was uh, very much used as uh, a monster final venue back in the 1960s. At that stage, between 1961 and 1970, ten different monster finals were played here, but only five in the uh, 40 years since. She's got to enjoy it. They all are, I think. Hard to believe when you consider that there are only five counties in Munster competing at this level for provincial glory, that it's 21 years since Limerick and Cork last met in a Munster hurling final. And back in 1992, it was played at Porky Queen, and uh, Jimmy Barry Murphy was then co-commentating on this match for RT Sport, but he's back directing operations, as you know, for Cork today, and sharing the limelight with uh, an old friend and a club colleague, John Allen. So, instead of JBM, Michael Dignan's most welcome. What a setting. Well, thanks, Gerald. I'm, first of all, I'm no Jimmy Barry Murphy, so we'll get that out of the way. But it's absolutely an incredible atmosphere there. Since three hours ago, the place was, was mostly full here. Great crowd from Cork and obviously a massive crowd from Limerick. And I think for the players out there today, Gerald, none of these players, as far as I know, have a Munster Championship medal. It's a huge occasion for them. Uh, I think most of the Limerick panel, 27 and or something, won their first championship match ever against Tip the last day. And now they all find themselves only three Cork players surviving from the 2010 Monster Final. So, really, it's a huge, huge occasion for all these players. And that's the big imponderable today. How will they react to this? To the pressure, to the atmosphere, to the occasion? And I often found as a player that you were maybe cooler than the supporters and your family and everyone else that you know that's maybe what you lived on your life for for occasions like this and this you know this is a real throwback to me Limerick have won since a month of championship since 96 Cork since 2006 so it's a brilliant occasion whoever wins it today I've gone to Limerick during the week but a bit like Cyril beforehand there you know who knows oh, he was we, sitting on that fence but he was sitting oh. on the fence I've gone to Limerick I'm going to stick with them but you know it is really a hard game to call and you don't know who's going to react best under this pressure today and you know, there's going to be mistakes there's going to be Incidents, there's going to be passion, there's going to be everything out there, and I'm really looking forward to it. We've got a glimpse there of uh, JBM on the sideline with Kieran Kingston, one of his selectors, the Moir Forda. And I have a recollection of Kieran scoring a winning point or winning goal, I think, in 1997, a match that was drawn between Cork and Limerick. And uh, Cork went on to win the replay in that game in Thursday. That was the day of the famous John Fenton goal. Do you remember the that? Great goal, of course I do. And I just happened to have a quick word with with Jared Cunningham and Kieran Kingston and Johnny Crowley down there before the game and Dr Con Murphy and it just struck me how relaxed they were these men have been through it so many times before and you know it'll be interesting to see if they can you know maybe tell the players what it's like on a day like this and, and impart that absolute massive experience that they have and that confidence that Cork teams always bring to the big occasion and you can see that maybe you know that is the thing about Cork when they have that swagger that they normally have well against uh, JBM today is of course John Allen a club mate at St Finbar's and a man who took this Cork team in 2006 and they won a Munster Champions that was the last time that Cork were successful in Munster and of course the year before he won an All-Ireland with the Rebels well now before the action gets underway there's going to be a minute silence and uh, this is for two people who sadly passed away recently Brendan Jones had been a member of the Hospital Herbertston Club but also a ham and he would have been well known around Limerick here as chairman of the GEA fundraiser in this part of the world the fundraiser is known as Lifting Limerick they raise funds to boost the games here on Shannon side and in particular hurling that's Brendan Jones one of those being remembered here and the other man is Christy Mannix of Clohorn a former chairman a secretary and a player with the club as well and he was also associated as a player with Treaty Sarsfields and with Limerick also uh, he was a man who won hurling medals in 57 and 58 and he won a football medal here in Limerick also back in 1950 so Brendan Jones and Christy Mannix both being remembered here a yesh love day Gorev and Nanam Naka
now in the broiling heat of Limerick before the action gets underway on Monster Final Day. Here's Aaron Avian. St. Patrick's Taliban make their way off the crowd in full voice. The scene a magnificent one here. And it's Limerick and Cork set to do battle in the 124th Monster Senior Hurling Final. And the man in charge is James McGrath. He was in charge of the replay of last year's All-Ireland Final as well between Kilkenny and Galway. It is Limerick who won the toss. And they've opted to play from right to left in the first half. And here they come. As in the match against Tipperary, it was uh, Donald O'Grady trying to get first possession there and trying to break away, but instead going deep, Seamus Hickey here. Playing it back, Paddy O'Brien having a go, and that's a brilliant start for Limerick. Paddy O'Brien, the LIT student, the uh, wing-back, getting primary possession inside the opening 20 seconds of this match and putting Limerick in front. Yeah, and Seamus Hickey doing what he does, I think he's bringing to this forward line, onto a ball very quickly and laid it off. I see Christopher Joyce gone from centre-back to midfield in a switch with Lorcan McLaughlin, who's gone back to centre-back straight away. Well, there were indications there would be switches, but right now Cork are switching into the attack, and that attack has produced a score for the midfielder, and it's uh, Daniel Carney getting his first point of this game, tying up the score, haven't even a minute played yet. Carney getting onto it here, inside the 45-metre line, doing, doing really well. Seamus Harnett, he's got into a full forward in another one of those switches. We were told there might be five or six positional switches made by Cork. Nothing new. James Ryan trying to get possession and succeeding here for Limerick. The man on the 40. Smart ball forward here as far as Graham Mulcahy. Taking off. Well hooked there by Tom Kenny. Kenny standing his ground, but Limerick have a chance of winning it back again. And Hannon, who started deep. Takes off past that first shoulder of Conor O'Sullivan and drives it over the bar. Two attacks by Limerick, two scores. That's a very impressive start. Yeah, Jordan, that's a great score. But I think if you look at that again, Declan Hannum does brilliantly here, breaks through. But possibly could have kept going. The whole thing was opening up in front of him there. But a very good score early again. Here's Graham Mulcahy and Tom Kenny using his experience are coming back. Mulcahy a little bit uh, ponderous there. That clearance out of defence is by Conor O'Sullivan. Once again, it's the Limerick defence and it's Wayne Gamara, solid as ever. Out here as far as Seamus Hickey, nobody on him. A lot of movement by the Limerick players so far in Cork, stayed in positions and this time the referee has spotted a foul inside and it's going to be a free in and around the 20 metre line and a chance of another point for Limerick and an even more impressive start for them. James McGrath there had spotted something, he was a good 50 metres away. Yeah, Ger, and just in Seamus Hickey's role here, uh, you know, it's going to be so vital. He drifted way out the field and picked up the ball, and I saw him in the league a couple of times, and what he's doing is he's actually running with the ball an awful lot, a very hot day for that, uh, but, you know, Tom Kenny will have to be a lot tighter on him because Hickey is a very good player. Hannon could get a second point for himself and a third for his team, and it really is a good start. So three points to one, not even three minutes played, and Limerick are in front here. Well, this was the foul here, it was just there in front of the post, just outside the 20 metre line, and the referee had spotted it. I think it may have been uh, Stephen McDonald. Yeah, very good referee in there by James McGrath. McDonald from the short puck out by Nash. Cork yet to settle, really. Oh, that went straight past Sean, uh, Shawnee Tobin, and Cork are able to benefit. It was Stephen Walsh going across here, now helped out by Richie McCarthy. McCarthy there on his own end line. Oh! 
Messi trying to link up with his goalkeeper with uh, Luca Farrell there almost intervening. That could have been horribly dangerous for Limerick. A hand pass from that position there could have put them really seriously into trouble. It's gone wide. Yeah, very dodgy play. We saw Jackie Turrell last night a couple of times passing back, but there was maybe 20 yards between him and the goalie. There was no danger, but that was a dangerous pass back there. I think that's the way Richie McCarthy plays. You know, he's, he's off the cuff and uh, you don't know what he's going to do next. Well, he got away with it. It was risky. Nicky Quaid's puck out, it's a huge one. The man he usually targets is David Breen over there. And Breen has got it. Big, tall, strong man. Chance of a goal here. And that one has gone wide. He had options, he had two men inside. They got nothing out of it. Well, that's it exactly, Joe. What a catch, first of all, and he's very good in the air. But once he went through with it, either tap it over the bar now or keep going and go for the goal. And he went away from the goals, hit it wide, and uh, wrong option there by David Breen. Well, you just got the feeling Cork haven't really started in this match. They're lucky to be just two points behind. Puck out again. Look again where Seamus Hickey had gone, but he didn't get that one. It was collected by Kean McCarthy. McCarthy in again quickly after this. Hickey likewise rolled up and then lost by Luke O'Farrell. Still they try to get it away. Once again, McCarthy one-handed across here as far as Tom Kenny. Kenny trying to slip away from Gabbard O'Mahony. Collected, however, in the end by Stephen Walsh. About to be hooped. It was Seamus Harnady who was in there starting, even though he's number 10 on his back, he's at full forward, here he is, Harnady, who was outstanding in the uh, semi-final, still being enough, given enough time and latitude to have a go, and he's missed the opportunity. All of that hard work, which he did himself virtually, failed to produce anything. Yeah, but you see uh, Seamus Harnady coming in, but Stephen Walsh was way too slow to clear the ball there. And just the space that Limerick are creating inside there, just huge space with Seamus Hickey coming off out the field and James Ryan just leaves maybe one or two inside the 50 metre line. Connolly Hamm, by the way, is out at right half forward. Meanwhile, mention of half forward, here's Seamus Hickey. Tripped back onto his feet. Not sure if the referee gave him advantage. It wasn't any advantage. In the end, they've lost possession, Limerick, and it's a free out to court. He is spelling a lot of danger so far, isn't he? He is, Jerry. Great catch, but I think the inside forward I would like to see him delivering the ball. You know, he's only running into trouble there, and uh, he eventually was penalised. Great catch by him. All he did was turn there and move that ball in fast into the full forward. Line. First chance for Anthony Nash, the goalkeeper, to come out and have a go of a free. And uh, he scored twice, you might remember, in the semi final against Clare. Goalkeeper with one goal and six points to his credit so far in Championship Hurling. Today playing just his eighth match. Light breeze behind him, sailing high. Now, has he got the accuracy? Not quite. So another wide for Cork, who trailed by three points to one. And now they'll be beginning to try and settle down to the task here after that uh, blitz start made by Limerick. Nicky Quaid ready to fuck it out. Again, David Breen trying to come and collect, but this time it's Carney who got his body in front of it. Couldn't collect it, however, and it's James Ryan who takes off from midfield. Off his left-hand side, accurately over the bar. James Ryan with his first. Yeah, that's a fantastic score, Ger. You know, once that ball broke, James Ryan was onto it like a, a flash and showed great strength and one quick look up and over the bar, super score. Cork struggling to get into it, Conor Lehan is out of right half forward and Seamus Harnley at full forward and really struggling to win possession, Limerick are all over them at the moment. Cork were trying to take a short puck out there but it didn't come to anything, they go long instead down towards Patrick Cronin, runs on instead towards Luca Farrell, runs into three Limerick defenders, one of them takes it away, one of them being their way, McNamara, slipping the hand pass out as far as his captain, Donal O'Grady, cut out here at the pass by Conor O'Sullivan, needs a second go, needs support as well, comes back here as far as Stephen McDonnell, Taken down here by the midfielder, Daniel Carney. Outside it comes Christopher Joyce. In his second season playing in the championship. Across there towards Harnady, does well to collect it. McCarthy's after him. Hand pass back there towards Pat Horgan. And Pat Horgan from the shot puts it over the bar. His first of the afternoon. And they eat into the lead. And now it's four points to two. And that's a little bit more like it by Cork. Enterprising play, opening out to the fence. And Harnady. Uh, one of those involved, slipping the pass to Horgan. Yeah, Cork worked that one out well, Jaron. With Limerick pulling out so far out the field, they're going to have to use that extra man, lay off the ball, and a great crossfield ball there by Christopher Joyce. Good score by Pat Horgan. It's Tom Kenny there, letting that one sailing over his head. He hasn't really settled down to this uh, match just yet against Seamus Hickey. Coming out of defence here. 
is Rock on McLaughlin. Now Kenny once again across the field this time. But it's the other number five who might get to it. Tori O'Brien who got the opening point of the match after about 20 seconds. Back to the corner here to Stephen Walsh. Big one in, in towards the two-man inside forward line. Essentially the two corner forwards are playing in there. And as expected, Declan Hannon has drifted out towards the half forward line, leaving space inside. Park Cronin from out near the sideline. First of all, they keep it in play, Cork, but uh, not able to get it under control completely there, Connerly Hahn, and his man, who's Tom Condon, digging in there, helped out by Gavin O'Mahony, O'Mahony almost out of the sideline, and passing it forward here into space towards Hickey, there were two on him, Hickey against Tom Kenny, Kenny gets to it, slips the little hand pass outside to Lee Hahn again, trying to make a shot for himself, 50 metres out from the target, that's always going to the right of the post, however, and that was very much offline. He was picked to play left corner forward, but uh, nobody quite expected that. He's uh, right now somewhere about right half forward. Pat Horgan is uh, somewhere between the full forward and the 40. And Kean McCarthy there as well. Jimmy Barry Murphy making some changes and switches. Yeah, and Shane O'Neill has switched on to Declan Hannon, as we expected as well, to follow him out the field. Uh, more comfortable in a run and roll like that. And just have to say, so far, the tackling of the Limerick defenders has been ferocious, but they're trying to crowd all that area around the half-hour in midfield, and they're leaving two men inside, but they're not getting the ball into them, so I think you know, they need to move that ball quicker into space, into the smaller full forward, and high ball is no good. Much to mull over for uh, John Allen. Meanwhile, back with the action, and Shane O'Neill doing a marking job, as you say, on Declan Hannon. I just wonder if uh, Brian Murphy had been fit to play, whether or not that might have been his role. We can only speculate. Yeah, but I think that Graham Mulcahy and Sean Tobin inside for Limerick, they're not the biggest men in the world, and, you know, high ball in them is no good. They need to be playing into space, let them use their pace, and that hasn't happened so far, even though Limerick are winning plenty of possession out of the field. Tobin has been marked by Stephen MacDonald, and uh, Conor O'Sullivan is on the other corner forward, who is Graham Mulcahy. Nicky Quaid to puck it out. Again, going to the right half old position. Usual route. Then the green breaks it down, onto it quickly comes... James Ryan, and if Green doesn't get it, Ryan is never too far away to pick up the pieces. Came back there towards Paul Brown, well blocked down. Lock on McLaughlin for Cork, the hand pass in there. Finally away by Park Cronin. Big, huge one down there towards Seamus Harmon, he couldn't get to it out. Instead comes Richie McCarthy, and McCarthy into a man who's space in space in midfield here and a chance for Wayne McNamara to launch it big long one down towards the corner forward Tobin's in after it knocked it down out comes the goalkeeper Anthony Nash has a support player it's Tom Kenny beats the attempted block gets it as far as Christopher Jones operating in midfield after him goes Donald O'Grady but it's still Joyce about to be hooked but he did well to get it in in as far as Harmony contains it very well controls pivots around and puts it over the bar he'll be thrilled with that and we got three points from play in the semi-final against Clare he gets one here and it gets narrow it's uh, now Limerick four Cork three yeah that's a great score John Christopher Joyce carried the ball and a great ball in but that came about from Wayne McNamara he just hit a ball from his own half back line aimlessly straight down the middle of the field with his corner forwards running off the ball uh, but Cork worked it very very well up the field and punished him for that it was 4-1, right now 4-3. Back again comes Daniel Carney for Cork, trying his luck. And I think the inside forwards would have appreciated that perhaps a better pass. That's five wides already by Cork. Well, yeah, and Jimmy, very, very annoyed on the sideline there, Joe, because, you know, a ridiculous ball, really no chance of putting that ball over the bar, and, you know, he should have played it in the full forward and looked sharp and we're getting the ball. Nicky Quaid, third year playing in goal for Limerick, ready with this puck out. This time down through the centre towards James Ryan breaks it, there's a player anticipating it's Donald O'Grady, head first lost his way, lost possession and the clearance out of defence is by Joyce, big one down to Harnady again, can't get to it this time, two Limerick men are on him, Tom Condon is one of them Condon's clearance to a totally unmarked Paul Brown, who should be marking him, Paul Brown gets it away, it was a hurley throw didn't uh, Effect Paul Brown. That was a good hoop there on Rock on McLaughlin, and it's Declan Hannon who was ready to take off. Referee blows his whistle, it's got to be a free in. And Declan Hannon, who's got two points already in this match, has a further opportunity to put two between them. Yeah, great hook there by Declan Hannon. Just watch him coming in. And you know, he really is to me big game player. You know, he was out injured a couple of years ago, but great pick up here down low to just bounced up into his hand and hurled pulled out of his hand a free in. But he's the player I think can have a huge influence in this game. And I wouldn't mind seeing him in around the edge of the square. I think he's very dangerous in there, but they're using him out the field at the moment. 
So this is opportunity to get a third. That one he's missed. A virtually perfect day for Hurling. It is very warm and there's a light breeze into his face. Temperature for the players, which they'll welcome, I think, of just a little bit. Porco short again with the puck out. Conor O'Sullivan time and again is waiting for it. This one he gets, and this one he goes long with. Down to Cronin. And the team captain, Patrick Cronin, is uh, fouled, and it's got to be a free in. So a chance for Cork to draw level. Yeah, that's a great catch there by Pat Cronin over the head of Paddy O'Brien. And in fairness to Pat Cronin over the last number of years, the criticism maybe of the Cork Forest can't win their own ball at times but he certainly has stood up over the last three four championships and a uh, great catch I think you'll see him being targeted a lot there today. I think it was David Breen who caught him. Tom Morgan has got one point already, goes for a second one and puts it over the bar. Well he got eight points against Clare, five of those came from freeze, he's deadly from any range there around about 40 50 meters out. So four points apiece, teams level. Yeah, Cork seem to be up to the pace of the game now, Jared. They were a bit slow to start, but you know they've scored the last three points and a bit of a mini comeback already early in the game, but they're winning lots of possession now again. This time Paul Brown picks up the pieces, drives it in there towards Graham Marcati, being marked by O'Sullivan, anticipating his work on McLaughlin. Good tracking back by the number eight, giving a, a helping hand, and then way down. Almost came for Kian McCarthy. Tom Condon comes out, helped on over there. And eventually it's Horgan, and Horgan, it starts out right and it moves inside the post, and it's over the bar. Three for Horgan. And Cork lead by five points to four, and they take the lead for the first time. Yeah, Jaron, that's three points from play now from the full forward line. Uh, Pat Horgan is two, Seamus Harney has one, and the Cosman off had trouble in there for the Limerick full back. Meanwhile, at the other end, it is uh, Stephen McDonald who had his problems in the last match, but settling down here now, trying to get that ball away, out of danger. Helped out here by William Egan. Egan inside here towards Kean McCarthy, left it behind there to Wayne McNamara. Up to it quickly comes Seamus Hickey and Limerick come back again, looking for another score of their own. Helped in here by the corner forward. Fed forward by uh, Wayne Alcahi, but uh, not to a colleague. And Cork can counter again, and it's all the way down once more towards Seamus Harmony from St. Eaters, near Yall, in East Cork. Back over here as far as Park Cronin. Cronin hitting it in long towards Luke O'Farrell. O'Farrell knocks it down, but there are a couple of Limerick players there waiting for it. Richie McCarthy is one of them, about to be challenged by Horgan. Back onto his feet again, and Richie McCarthy, a hand pass one, injudiciously earlier on, this time decides to belt it out, but I uh, don't think he intended to belt it out of play. That ball to Cork, taken quickly by Tom Kenny, and the referee says, hello, oh, well. And he's going to have a, a word and a look here, I think, at uh, Park Cronin. And a word to the Cork captain, something that may have been said or done. Yeah, I didn't see anything, Jerry, but you'd have to say Cork have really up the pace, and you can see them trying to speed it up there. It's nearly ten minutes now since the Limerick last scored. And that's yeah. going to be a source of worry for John Allen and the mentors. Yeah, and you saw Richie McCarthy with that last ball. Gavin O'Manty was just outside him, a simple hand pass, and he poked it out over the line, and they're certainly feeling the heat in that full back line. It'll be Tom Kenny who'll take this, playing in his uh, seventh monster final match. Big, huge one in by Kenny. Inside to Hannity, spills around in there. Hawkins will do it! Across the face of Gollum wide. A real goal chance for Cork. And Limerick in defence at sixes and sevens back there. Yeah, good, good line ball in and just broken down and Pat Horgan you think, just, just flicks out in here very narrow angle did well actually to get the ball back across and it's hard I don't know how it didn't go in but it went straight back across the goal and, and wide on the far post it's been said about Cork they don't score too many goals well they nearly had a chance of one there from the Limerick puck out Lockhart McLaughlin is back around the half back line at this stage and one of the switches and changes picking it up here is Ben Malkai he's got great pace Still not carry off his left hand side and beautifully over the bar. Teams are level again. Level for the second time. Limerick 5, Cork 5, 17 and a half minutes are gone. Yeah, and a great battle there. Conor Sullivan is super cornerback, but Mulcahy has great pace. He's very brave. And, you know, I think Limerick are a little bit confused, I think, in terms of what they're trying to achieve. They need to get the ball in in front of him. High ball in there is not going to work. And, um, you know, he, if he gets in front of him, it's going to cause damage. From Anthony Nash's puck out to Tom Kenny, shortish. Might yield something at the other end. Again, it is Harnady and having difficulty with the youngster up there. Seamus Harnady, who never played minor, only 21 for Cork. Big monster final day for him. 
big match to follow today for Donald O'Grady as well. As he gets that ball across to his midfield partner, Paul Brown. Delivers it in quickly. Dangerous one, goalkeeper comes. It was in that little corridor between goalkeeper and full back line. He did well. Gets it out here as far as Daniel Carney. Carney across field towards Kim McCarthy. Two SARS men combining, and at the end of it all, it's put wide by Kim McCarthy. Playing in his 11th championship match. He's only ever scored five points. So clearly scoring is something he needs to be working on. Five all still. Yeah, and that was a poor wide, great ball up by Anthony Nash to Daniel Carney. Another, another lovely crossfield ball. And see there are seven wides from Cork to Limerick's two, and it just shows you Cork are really, in the last ten minutes, have taken over the game. Taking over, but uh, still level as Nicky Quaid pucks it out. And onto it quickly there came Shane O'Neill, needing some support, getting it from Park Cronin. And Cronin is going from a long, long distance, he's going to drop short. It's spilled by Nicky Quaid. Richie McCarthy was required. Seamus Harnady was almost into profit. A lapse by the goalkeeper. He got away with it. Two goal chances for Cork now in the space of the last five minutes. Still no goals in this match. Limerick back into the attack again, but they lose it there. And it comes out as far as William Egan. Helped on here as far as Daniel Carney. Through the middle to Kian McCarthy. 65 metres from the target. Inside towards Harnady again. They wait for a little knockdown. And in the knockdown comes to Luca Farrell. And a foul strikes and puts it over the bar. So another one over the bar by Luke O'Farrell, and it's now six points to five. Yeah, good, good referee there, Luke O'Farrell. And you can see Nicky Quaid before that ball came in, he was squinting up at the sun, had his hand over his eyes, and well done, Richard McCarthy got back. But very difficult for goalies. In the old days, you know, we used to have the peak caps, but they're gone now with the helmets, and uh, difficult for goalies on a sunny day. They'll have to design something, I think. Gabriel O'Mahony getting it out here to Tom Condon. Limerick needing a score. Up there towards James Ryan. Ryan trying to drag it in past Norcom McLaughlin. Has a support player available who wants to use him. Tobin's calling for it. Oh, it's just beyond him. Didn't reach him. And Carney's back helping out. He's got a great engine in the midfielder. In as far as Joyce. And Joyce drives it a good 70 metres way down the field. Harnett, he did well to keep it in play. Horgan's availing of that tap back to him there. Off balance. Somehow got a shot away. And puts the ball wide. The umpire took a while to make his mind up on that one and Pat Morgan is aggrieved I think he felt it was over yeah and they're asking him to check with the linesman he was sure it was over the bar no Hawkeye obviously here in Limerick but uh, Jerry I'd have to say uh, Cork seem to be absolutely flying it fitness wise they're covering all over the uh, Lim all over the Limerick forward line at the moment um, and great catch again by David Green absolutely David Breen advancing with some menace and uh, clenching his fist he does his job so well the former captain so good in the air after him came William Egan and Egan put in the stick there caught him by the arm down went Breen and the Napierschik man makes sure that there's a free to his team and there's a, a yellow card there which was uh, given to the court man I think it's the Lorcan McLaughlin who got the yellow card and the free taken by Declan Hallam and Hallam has put it over Three points for Declan Hallam and the teams are level for the third time. And it's a rip-rolling contest at the uh, Gaelic Grounds in Limerick. Limerick at home for the Willie! second time Willie! in this championship after their fantastic victory over one of the favourites, Tipperary. Short puck out once again as far as Conor O'Sullivan on as far as William Egan. And incrementally they get it way down the field. Limerick coming to terms with that back there. And Seamus he Hickey once again slips back, helps out, has got tremendous energy and enthusiasm going forward again stopped however this time by Tom Kenny right on the sideline slips it back onto his left hand side and gets it away inside helped on by Harnady in there as far as Luke O'Farrell once again it's Cork in charge here and that final shot is by Seamus Harnady he's got one well that's uh, the way it's going to stay at the moment young man who'll be 23 on Wednesday looking for an early birthday present of a first Munster winners medal his mother Cathy Landers, of course, was a tremendous Camogie player who I think has something like six All-Ireland medals to her credit. That's right, Jerry. This tactic with Seamus Hickey, Jerry, he's winning loads of possession, but he's running into trouble. Tom Kenny's just sitting back now and letting him run at him, and he's causing, you know, it's, it's, there's no advantage at all to any forwards. Here's James Ryan. And Ryan has a look up, it drives it in. There was a little uh, tap on that one, stopped by Joyce from going in completely. Out comes Rock on McLaughlin. Any man to be yellow carded in the game so far. Shane O'Neill away down. Bit of a gap between the rest of the field and the Cork inside forward line. 
So a lot of space for them in which to manoeuvre. Live ball to be taken by Stephen Walsh. Held on to by Paddy O'Brien. Once again, it's Walsh. Has a loose man. It's Paul Brown. Needs a second go. Two men advancing there to try and take it from him. Park Cronin and also Daniel Carney unable to get to it. Held forward by O'Brien there. Winning the race is Stephen McDonnell of Glen Rovers. First touch wasn't great and he was uh, glad to see William Egan come in and help him out. Good teamwork there by Cork at the back. One back again here by Wayne McNamara. Six points apiece in the Munster final. Paul Brown trying to edge Limerick in front from a huge distance out, but he's put it to the right this time. And it's the third wide Limerick have had in this game. 24 minutes into the match, another short puck out here as far as Tom Kenny. Ready to launch the next attack. Pressure on that Limerick full back line. They've been coping well enough now in the last few minutes. Tom Condon getting it away smartly out as far as David Breen. Good accurate curling down there towards the dangerous player Mulcahy. Stuck in his tracks by Conor O'Sullivan. And O'Sullivan is a wonderful, tidy little cornerback here. Really terrific player. Has been one of the best cornerbacks in the country, I think, in the last few years. All the way down to Hardity. Stopped by Richie McCarthy, who was outstanding in the semi-final. And McCarthy losing his stick and the referee seeing Limerick losing their way and giving a free in to Cork from just outside the 20-metre line. So yeah, free in. I think you can just see Richard McCarthy has a bit of a hold of Seamus Harnady there. I think, Joe, you'd have to say Limerick will be the happier after 25 minutes. Uh, really, Cork have had it around nine wides at this stage. Uh, they're full forward line of four points from play scored. They're, you know, they're really crying out for the ball in there, and they've hit a few wides from out the field. But, um, you know, I think Limerick, as I was saying, Seamus Hickey, he's, ta he's gone very deep, picking up the ball, then running with it, not delivering it into the full forward end. So I think they'll be happy that they're still in the game and it's all square at this stage. Well, now, what would... Uh Pat Organ consider here. I presume he's just going to try and tap it over the bar and give his side the lead. It's a bit of a distance out, and that's exactly what he does. He's got four for the afternoon so far. Two from freeze, two from play. Four. He's back in the lead again by seven points to six in front of a packed house at the Gaelic grounds where everybody has been enjoying the fair on offer. As you joined us late, the minor match, which is a wonderful game between Limerick and Waterford, finished level, 219 apiece. From that puck out, it's Tom Kenny once again taking it, getting away, had the chance to give the easy hand pass, now he gives it to Park Cronin, and Park Cronin, huge one, that was 60-70 uh, metres out from the target, and it's a first of the day for Park Cronin, the 26-year-old from Bishopstown. Yeah, lovely simple hand pass back by Tom Kenny, who's becoming more influential and pack running over the bar. And it's just interesting too, Jared, that Cork are trying to up the pace all the time, quick puck out, quick line balls, anything they can do to up the pace, obviously very confident in their fitness. Meanwhile, route one for Limerick and David Green once again. Three men in red are after him. David Green takes an awful lot of steps. And eventually the referee blows the whistle, indicts the Cork men and gives the free in. Green, I think, was lucky. Yeah, well, uh, you know, see now he takes it back in his hand here. There's an arm in around there, yeah, Pundis Hurland, Curtis, good call, I think it was uh, William Eaton coming back, just a little tug there on the hurl, we often see him get away with it. Will Hannon go for it now? This is the question. It's a nice central position for him, his team two points behind, still very much in the first half and he's happy to put it up and over the bar, and he's got four points, same as Pat Horgan. His four points made up of one from play and three from freeze, and it's eight points to seven anybody's match next puck out to be taken by Anthony Nash this time Limerick uh, still at the two corner backs free if Anthony Nash wants to give it to them but the goalkeeper changes his plan and a long one down towards Park Ronan coming in and picking it up here Pat Horgan looking to try and get some space for himself aware that he was going to be hooped lovely defensive work here by Limerick only O'Grady back helping out Pass away here as far as Wayne McNamara. McNamara ready to go through three, four court players. Three converging on him right now. Another one just a metre or so away, finally losing it. And Tom Kenny flights it back in once again towards the big man Harnady. Seamus Harnady once again takes on Richard McCarthy. McCarthy, however, gets the stick in there. And it's a stalemate situation which ends in a foul on the Limerick player. And a free out for the Shannon Siders. One between them. Yeah, that was great play there by Richie McCarthy. He was under fierce pressure on his knees and in the last possession then managed to get it back again and uh, won the free. Uh, great great play, inspirational play by Richie McCarthy. Back once again, Daniel Carney. 
Cork's midfielder. In over the head of Condon. In as far as Hannity. And Hannity makes space for himself and puts it over the bar. He's got another one. Two points from open play now by Seamus Hannity, who's played just his second ever championship match. And he's made it nine points to seven. In over the head of Tom Condon that time. And then Hannity got back goal side, made an angle, took a good score. Uh, Jared Player will come out and over this year and he looks like he's been playing championship hurling all his life. Absolutely well, outstanding He's so part far. of a very good UCC squad. Meanwhile, back from Limerick and Donald O'Grady. Back as far as Paul Brown. Brown has enough room now to swing this stick and enough time to get it over the bar. Beautifully over. So nine points to eight. 29 yeah. minutes are gone. And Paul Brown, I think that's about the third chance he's had and wouldn't get an easier run than that over the bar. Good score. So Nash once again now, ready with the uh, puck out. John Allen surveying the scene here. We think that uh, Tom Kenny may have got himself uh, a yellow card. Immediately after that, right now it's Kian McCarthy playing on the 40. In there as far as Christopher Joyce. Joyce had a goal, was half hooked, comes to get it back here and it's back as far as Park Cronin not the best of clearances by Limerick and the final shot by Park Cronin is one who'll be disappointed with stays at nine points to eight well, it looks like Richie McCarthy there I think Ger with a great block very brave and uh, you'd have to say Cork have created maybe three or four half goal chances in the first half and hit some bad wides and they'll be wondering how they're not maybe further ahead but here he is here's Christopher Joyce breaking inside and just watch Richie McCarthy very brave come out there in front of him Mr. Joyce, the player, only made his debut against Offaly last year. So right in the thick of the action right now, it's Lockhall McLaughlin in as far as William Egan. Back into the centre to Park Cronin. Suddenly Limerick are very lax in their marking and allowing people like Park Cronin to get into good positions from which they're availing of the opportunity to put it over the bar. His second point in this half, and he stretches it out to a two-point advantage for the Siders once again. Five minutes to go to half-time. Nicky Quaid pucks it out. Down on top of that cork half back line. It was Shane Hickey trying to add to it there. In came Christopher Joyce once again. Couldn't quite uh, get it under control as he was hoping to do so. He's got remarkable energy playing in midfield. He's been up and down the field, Joyce. That line ball is into Limerick's Paul Brown, and Paul Brown hits it to the left this time. And a disappointing finish for him. His team still point, two points behind. That's a very, very poor wedge, I'm sorry, but you know, Donald O'Grady was loose outside him, nobody near him, within 30 yards, and what he did was slip a little pass over to him, and I think that's about the third way that uh, Paul has had now. Well, Cork seem to have abandoned the short puck outs in the last five minutes, they're going long. That time the target was uh, Pat Horgan, but uh, didn't quite get, uh, Pat Cronin didn't quite get to it. Back in by Brown, one into the danger man, Declan Hannon, back up onto his hands and knees, stopped, and Shane O'Neill takes it away towards Park Crone and two Cork men going towards the one ball eventually neither got it and Stephen Walsh able to get in behind them and to clear down towards Breen once again he's got a little bit of work to do to try and make it his competing there with Daniel Carney Carney getting it onto his stick and Carney looking at the target fighting it in stopped well by the goalkeeper Nicky Gray really caught it well that's a fine save Got it out as far as Gavin O'Mahony. Sun in the eyes, good clearance, and Limerick are back into the attack again. And it is James Ryan hitting it from 65 metres out, but he puts it to the left, and it's a missed opportunity, and it's Limerick's fifth wide. Yeah, you have to say, there are some of the wides taking the buzz out of the game a little bit. You know, they're great play there up the field, and James Ryan, great catch by Nicky Quaid, who started very brave, and really, you know, bad whites with under no pressure at all for 50, 60 yards. That should be able to put them over the bar. Well, Nicky Quaid's dad, Tommy, played in uh, five Master Finals, 1-3. Late Tommy, so sadly missed. Limerick on the attack. And Limerick's Shawnee Tobin has his first scoring opportunity to put it over the bar. And everybody in the inside forward right now for Limerick has scored from open play. And now they're within a point again. It's ten points to nine as a result of this latest point by Mar the Maru Bohor players, only 23 years of age. And I think Limerick will be looking for more of that type of play. Great snappy ball right in front of Shawnee Coleman, and he can do that all day if he gets the right ball. Well, balanced delicately at this stage, both sides having their periods of supremacy. Richie McCarthy there, having difficulty with Seamus Harnady, but he's done well to come back. Look at all the challenge he was anticipating having today. Seamus Hickey, as ever, foraging deeply, all the way up as far as Declan Hannon. The cross goes, Sean O'Neill to him. 
Allen goes in on the end line, O'Neill tries to force the ball away, does well enough to try and stymie the attacker, and is still there, difficult situation for Cork to contend with, possibilities for Limerick, finally in the end it's Rock on McLaughlin who gets it out, as far as Chris Joyce, an appearing player, steps away from the trouble presented there by James Ryan, the hand pass by Cronin, across the space to Daniel Carney, and the 23-year-old Sars man, deep inside his own half, lets it off long, down towards Luke O'Farrell, Two Limerick players are there against him, however, and one of them is the indefatigable Richie McCarthy. Nothing to stop him getting that ball out as far as the hard-working Wayne McNamara. Held on to brilliant by Shane Masicki, in spite of the attention of Tom Kenny. On as far as Stone O'Grady. Can they finish with a score here? Back goes Cronin with the challenge, and the referee, referee penalises Cronin. Great spell of play. Cork still in front by a point, but maybe not for much longer. Yeah, Joe, what a passage of play. Donald O'Grady fouled there, but... You'd have to say some of the, per the battles here, the duels, she Seamus, uh, or Rich Richie McCarthy and Seamus Harnady. She she Harnady has got two points, but Richie McCarthy is having an unbelievable game. And Shane O'Neill, there you saw him there covering Declan Hannan coming in. They're having a great battle. Conor O'Sullivan and Graham McCahey, another great battle. And it's, it's a fantastic game. It's finely balanced at the moment. It may well finish this first half as it started level. Declan Hannan has got four so far. Now he's got five and the teams are locked together at ten points apiece. Terrific Munster final, level for the fourth time, and the game is now about to go into one minute of injury time. It's got to be Cork's puck out, and uh, once again Anthony Nash looking around, going short, back to the old plan. Plan A or Plan B, take your pick. Conor O'Sullivan, down towards Kian McCarthy, being well marked, however, by Gabon Mahani, in as far as James Ryan, gets loose from Lockhorn McLaughlin, and has that chance to get it in there as far as Harmony, balances it on his stick, then shows some lovely craft and trick work, but in comes O'Neill, who's seen it all before, to try and block his route to go, and in the end, the referee decides that uh, Shane O'Neill was fouled, and it's got to be a free out for Cork, and we're already 15 seconds into stoppage time. Great first touch there by Declan, that's the second or third time, he makes it look so easy, but Shane O'Neill, brilliant corner back, he's a great defender, and he's stuck with, his, stuck with him, and... Great example, I think, there to young players. No panic and just kept goal side and blocked him off. And the referee saw the hand there of uh, Hannan catching O'Neill. Good referee by James McGrath. And the referee again blows his whistle, this time with Paddy O'Sullivan down on the ground inside that circle. And uh, he's calling across. It's a red card to Pat Horgan. Pat Horgan has been sent off. Let's just see what happened again here now. The there is the foul. The ball hit him in the head. Pat Horgan slapped in the back of the head, but the ball actually hit him in the forehead. That's why he went down. Well, what do you think? Well, I just got such a shock because I, I knew straight away that the ball had hit him in the forehead. That's why he went down. I didn't see the flick coming in from behind until just now. So, Well, for that tap in the back of the head there of the uh, wing-back, Paddy O'Brien, the referee has given the red card to Pat Horgan. It certainly upsets the balance of this match, which was balanced, balanced very delicately. A lot for Jimmy Barry Murphy now and his selectors to contemplate. They're going to play the second half with 14 men. It'll be advantage Limerick, surely, you would imagine. But right now, as the teams go off to their respective dressing rooms, with a very bemused Pat Horgan explaining it there to Dr Con Murphy as to what happened, on a very, very sunny afternoon in Limerick, plans are being hatched. We're in for a very fascinating second half. A lots of analysis on the first half in a moment, but at half time here, it's Limerick 10, Cork 10. We're back after this. We're just taking a check on substitutions, and Jamie Collin has come in for Cork. So he joins the uh, Cork attack, the 14 men making a change. In case you've joined us late, Patrick Horgan sent off just before half time players has had a, an impeccable disciplinary record uh, I think I'm lucky to be sent off but the rules are rules and off he went Park Roden back as far as William Egan that's all the way down towards the uh, new man who's in there might well have come in in place of Luke O'Farrell not 100% sure about that we'll just see in a moment waiting confirmation it's uh, Kian McCarthy in fact who has gone off the Cork team and he's been replaced by Jamie Collin who's number 24 and there's in the thick of the action Seamus Harnady leaving it here as far as Park Ronan. And the uh, player can't 
tell at this stage who the extra player is and how he's been used because there are a lot of extra players and that final shot is by Connerly Hahn. Is that a very disappointing match so far? This is a young man who's only uh, 20 years of age, had a great start to the league campaign last year. So much was expected of him at that stage. But I think defenders have got to know his style, tightened up on him, and he's got a lot to, uh, to learn and to, to get through. He's a good player. Back from Limerick and Graham Mulcahy, and that one flies over the bar, Limerick's first attack of the second half. And straight away, it's Limerick who go back into the lead. The 15 men leading by 11 points to 10. Yeah, well broken down there. And again, maybe half a chance on if he kept going with that to, to bury it in the net, but I uh, tapped it over the bar. And it looks like uh, Stephen Walsh, the right cornerback, is the loose man. He's just sweeping in front of the full back line. Great catch by Donald Brady. And look, Brady playing it in here. It's caught again by Mulcahy. Two points so far. Looking for another one. He's put it wide this time. Well, they will get the chances. They'll have that breeze behind them. And they have the extra man, and of course, Cork having to play with 14 in blazing heat here in Limerick. It's going to be tough. It is indeed, Ger, and I think interesting now Limerick have gone back to an orthodox full forward line, and the plan is obviously get the ball in there as quick as they can. They are unchanged. Right now it is Cork who are trying to launch another attack, but it's broken up in the middle of the park. Donald O'Grady leaving it there to Daniel Carney, however. Carney putting Cork back in, down again, down towards him. Colin, and this is Jamie Colin out over the uh, sideline, and that's going to be a line ball to Cork. Jamie Colin, who did well when he came on as a sub here against Clare in the last match, had hip surgery during the winter time, missed the entire Alliance League. Very talented young attacker. Not a good ball, however, from him, straight to Stephen Walsh, and the man who was virtually free to mark nobody in particular and sweep at the back gets in as far as Shawnee Tobin and Tobin challenged there by Lockham McLaughlin and McLaughlin who's uh, got a yellow card for the first half has to be careful nothing terribly sinister in this but uh, it just gets tangled in the arm there of Shawnee Tobin and it's a free which will be taken by Declan Hannon and he'll be hoping to have uh, lots of opportunities now Cork don't have their free taker the usual free taker anymore remember that was Patrick Horgan he's got off and it's got four from five so far from those frees. This from 40 metres out, central position. And straight as you can wish. Start of the second half then, he's got a six point, and Limerick lead by two. Yeah, and I actually, Jaron, looking there, Richie McCarthy's actually gone loose now, the full back, and one thing you have to be careful of, you know, with that extra man at the back is that, you know, lads are committed to marking their men, and that the loose man, you know, sometimes he gets caught between the two of them, who's going to the ball. Then we can really start very, very well in the second half. Wonderful catch by Wayne McNamara. Back into the attack, they go again. Stopped by Shane O'Neill, however, right on the sideline here. Gets that ball away from his man, beats the attempted block there. Sends it back down, but stopped by Paddy O'Brien. Man, who got the first point of this match. Stepped on over the sideline, and the linesman on the near side, who is Barry Kelly from Westmeath, with his flag raised immediately. The two linesmen today, Barry Kelly and Brian Gavin, those men were in action last night in Thurles. That was a very good catch by Wayne McNamara just moments earlier. The young man from Adair, who is uh, playing his fifth championship season. William Egan's going to take this stronger performer this year having won his place back at left half back cutting it in over the head of Colin caught well here back out in the glorious sunlight out to Wayne McNamara McNamara down into the corner forwards once again in there towards Shawnee Tobe and Graham Mulcahy was trying to arrive and Stephen McDonald is the one who emerges with it uses the ball intelligently plays it as far as Christopher Joyce Joyce back up onto his feet again, the referee didn't give a free, gave an advantage if there was one to approve, and there wasn't. Cork have it again, the crowd from Cork booing because there was no free given, and Limerick are able to attack once more, all the way down towards Graham Mulcahy, coming across here to collect it, again the very tidy Shane O'Neill, accurately in as far as Daniel Carney, makes some room for himself, gets away from David Breen's would-be hoop. Nicely across here towards Luke O'Farrell, a point scorer in the first half, this time Tom Condon comes in, and uh, this time, the referee is uh, pointing for the free. But he's also had words out of camera there with uh, a couple of players. Notebook is out, just to record that. Yeah, and Jerry, you commented there um, on you know, giving the advantage, and it's a fine line at times, you know. I think when you're down to 14 men in a game like this in that heat, I think Cork prefer to get their free and trust Pat Horgan from 80 or 90 yards rather than, you know, a 50-50 ball. 
Oh, if he was here, sorry. He's not here. <laughs> he's gone. <laughs> Full pad there. Who's, who's like taking over the freeze now? Over, yeah. Well, right now, Jamie Collin standing over it. From Newton Chandram. Striking it off the left. And doing a Patrick Morgan in it and getting the first point of the second half for Cork and first point of the match for him. So it's back to uh, the point once again, 2012 to 11. And now there's another change and Paul Norton is coming in in place of Conor Lehan, who never really settled with the tempo of this match today. So in comes Cahill Nocton, we heard Gerlach Nahan talking about his influence the last time that Cork were down to 14 against Galway some years ago in Thurlis in a qualifier. Okay. Take oof. almost uh, being too clever that time. Back as far as James Ryan, and James Ryan drives it brilliantly over the bar. A point in each half now for the Gary Spillan player. Taking the pass back there and making absolutely certain and putting two between them again. Yeah, very good score, John. James Ryan's been very good since the start of the game. He's working very hard and two great points now for play as well. Cork having to use their bench because they're down to 14 and it's energy sapping. And that was uh, Mulcahy with the block on as far as lock on McLaughlin. Now knocked him. He's been very sparingly used by Cork management teams in recent years. Has a lot to show. No one is little under hit because there was a partial block on it. But this is a man with enormous res uh, reserves of pace. And if he gets going, and if he's in that mood, he can be quite irresistible. Well, he can, Jerry. That's the great thing he has, is that pace and the great finisher off his left side normally. But that's terrible. Here's Connor Sullivan so with a great block down. Graham McKay stood up to hit the ball, and he won't get away with that at this level. Once again, the challenge there is strong. And this time it's Rock on McLaughlin, picked at midfield, playing at the half-back line, in as far as Park Ronan. Ronan has gone deep for the second half. Cork have had to use just a two-man inside forward line. And it'll be an inside forward line of uh, Jamie Collin and also Luke O'Farrell. And that was Collin there. And once again called into action to take a free from virtually the same position that he put over the bar just a few minutes earlier. Well, then he made it 12-11. Now can he put one between them again? Super free the first time, Jared, from a very difficult angle, and this is another very difficult one. Pressure is on him. Can you repeat it? He can. That's a great free. Brilliantly put over by Jamie Gawler, who will have been a bit disappointed, I think, not to have started this match. Had a good game, I thought, when he came on against Clare. So now it's 13 points to 12. It's advantage in Limerick, but this is the Monster Final 2013. Limerick on home territory, roared on by a big, big crowd here, a huge following from Cork as well, making the journey. Paul Brown leaving it, helped out here by Shawnee Tobin, and Tobin, 20 metres out, hits it over. Two points for Tobin, really good play by the Maru Boho player. 14 points to 12, good response by Limerick. Yeah, great turn of pace there by Shawnee Tobin, short of the grip and over the bar, and Stephen Graham McKay now getting more and more onto the ball and looking very dangerous inside the limits of the Cork goes short out of defence. William Egan now back in there towards Cronin. Can't take it. Not initially anyway. Luca Farrell. Back in there was Seamus Hickey as well. It bounces around with all the referee got in the way. Got in the way of Wayne McNamara. And in the end, the player down on the deck there is Seamus Hickey. But it's helter skelter stuff here. That was Cahill Nocton. And that was the uh, final wraparound challenge there, which fell the Limerick man. Down went Hickey. Yeah, I think the horse swung around there and caught him, maybe on the side of the head as well. It was not malicious again, but he did get a good... Got a good shot there, and... Uh... Well, the medical team are in attending to Hickey. Concerned Jimmy Barry Murphy. And who led Cork to victory in the Ireland Series back in 1999. A wonderful young team that year. And the Cork fans and the Limerick fans responding and they raised the decibel level. And is there anywhere in the sporting world that you would wish to be right now other than the centre of the universe for the Hurlers, the Daily Grounds here in Limerick? Free to Limerick will be taken by Gavin O'Mahony from a huge distance inside his own 65 metre line. And they can't contain it, in spite of the best efforts of David Green in there. 
And the big man went down under the challenge. Puck out to Cork, who trailed by two. But there's loads of time left. We're only 11 minutes into the second half. And Limerick are about to make a big change, their first big change. And Shane Dowling is about to come on for David Green. I wonder if this could be a match-winning move. He starred when he came on against Tipperary, and there he is, number 20. He's gone in around the middle of the field trying to influence things, but right now it's Cork in possession, and it's Daniel Carney. 14 men of Cork against 15 from Limerick, sending off for Pat Horgan just before half-time. Back comes Stephen Walsh. Driving it down the field there, down towards Shawnee Tolga. Real race for possession with Stephen McDonald. And the linesman, Ryan Gavin from Offaly, pointing in the direction of the court goal, so it'll be a Limerick sideline ball. In no particular hurry to take it, it'll be Seamus Hickley who'll go across and hit this next one. Ahead by two, trying to maximise every opportunity they've got. If they change their minds, they're leaving it for Gavin O'Mahony today. Gavin has done a lot of very good hurling at Mary, a coach of hurling in Mary Eye here in Limerick, along with Eamon Cregan. Eamon was part of the uh, backroom team for the Limerick Miners today. We played a wonderful game against Waterford, a match which was drawn. Two between them here, Limerick in front in the Munster final. Gavin O'Mahony, again they're taking their time about it. A bit early for doing that. All the way in, broken down. They try to get it away. Shane O'Neill's after it. Gets it away. Loses possession well as far as Park Road. They're not just belting it anywhere, they're trying to place a collie down towards Jamie, or down towards Colin there, Jamie Colin, but with two men on him, the extra man at the back for Limerick, always going to be important. In as far as Paul Brown. Brown back up there once again, up towards Hannon. Hannon almost getting loose for a moment, and then a couple of court defenders converge on him, and one of them is Steve. Stephen McDonald who got that ball away, out towards Rockwell McLaughlin, keeps it in play, hits it along 50 metres down towards Seamus Harnedy, with a very good first start, being marked by Stephen Walsh in the second, and Walsh fouled him that time, it's a free to court, Harnedy's pumped up, trying to cheat up the court, following here as well in the brick. Part of the big occasion of Munster final day. Yeah, and Joe, that's two or three frees, nearly in the same position that the Liberty defence have given away. And when they had the extra man back there, there was no need. Even if he won possession there, he's gone away from the goals. Tom Cannon get away a couple of Stephen Wilds there. And uh, they have to say they're keeping Cork in the game because Cork would, would have just pulled him down there needlessly. And you see the crowd referee there as well. But you know, really, you'd expect him with Shane Dowling, you mentioned there, coming on there now. You said Jamie Cotton was disappointed. Shane Dowling must have been the most disappointed man in Ireland if he wasn't there. And he's a point to prove, but it's a very, very warm day out there. And he's not the most mobile, so it'd be interesting to see how it goes. Jamie Gollan once again, two so far from two frees. The angles have been a bit better on this one, can he make it three in a row? This one he has put wide. It was easier, it seemed, than the other two. Shake of the head there. Only 21 years of age. It'll be a puck out for Limerick, who lead by 14 points to 12. 14 minutes gone in the second half. Lots of time remaining. Sun into the eyes of the Cork defenders right now as Carney went up for it. Runs on towards Egan instead and William Egan from Kilbrin. Down into space, but there are lots of Limerick players there waiting for it. The one who took it was Wayne McNamara. Not a great clearance. But run back nonetheless by the new man in Shane Dowling. In tight towards Hannon. Two arts go reach now. Colleagues in that college and that's beautifully over the bar. By Declan Hannon, who's now got seven points in this Munster final, and Limerick lead by three, and there are 50 minutes gone. Yeah, that's a super point. Good ball in by Shane O'Neill, a great catch by Declan Hannon. What a battle has happened uh, with Shane O'Neill. You know, he's had a couple of other half chances of getting through on goal, but Shane O'Neill has done very well on him, and both have played very well. But Hannon, you know, is going to become more influential. He's a very, very good player. Paul trying to respond. They've got just two points in the second half so far, and the quarter of an hour played. It's advantage Limerick, and it's James Ryan playing it back here to Wayne McNamara. And the 15 men trying to impose themselves a little bit more on Cork, but back goes Conor O'Sullivan. Not for the first time in Championship Hurling, linking up with his goalkeeper. Clever use of possession, but then the final ball out of defence goes straight to Paul Brown of Limerick. Pursued there by Christopher Joyce. Brown slipping it inside, poor ball. 
his win mirror, I think, was uh, showing a, a Limerick player, but instead it was a court man who got it, but it runs kindly this time to James Ryan. Back in here as far as Dowling, deliver the last pass to Hannon, goes for this one himself and puts it over the bar. An immediate impact is made by Shane Dowling. And Dowling, who is uh, just 20 years of age, gets his first and makes it 16 points to 12. And is this game now very firmly turning around in Limerick's direction? From that puck out, it's won once again here by Paddy O'Brien, out over the sideline. Those couple of scores now are really robbing uh, the morale of Cork. You can almost see Cork's morale crumbling very yeah. noticeably. I agree with Jerry, missing that free, it would have brought it back to 14 13, and then Limerick go down the field and score two great points. And James Ryan again, so involved with centre forward, lovely little hand pass to Shane Dowling, and over the bar. And here we have Connor Alice coming in as well. Is it going to Graham Mulcahy gone off, they're a little bit surprised with that maybe, I thought Mulcahy's still dangerous and full of running, but Alice again a big strong man and maybe there to win more possession in the half forward. Yeah, he's a different kind of player completely, very much a half forward, whereas Mulcahy was a finisher. So a change of direction maybe, but then you've got the two big men, Shane Dowling and Declan Hannon, former uh, wonderful, prodigious underage talents, coming good here in the heat of battle in the Munster Championship, Limerick trying to win back this uh, monster title for the first time in 17 years and that's where that challenge came in there that was by Conor Alice first intervention this is going to be Conor O'Sullivan who will hit this next one from the Sarsfields club in Riverstown Glenmar didn't make the greatest of contact with that but it still comes good for Tom Kenny Kenny looking for a fourth winner's medal this year Cut out by Tom Condon looking for a first. Trying to get away there from Luca Farrell, and Luca Farrell puts in the stick and makes a very good contact and makes it very awkward for the corner back there from Nakaderi. Nine ball to Cork, went off Condon. This one's got to be taken by Tom Kenny. Cork needing a score. They've gone four behind. They were level 10 points apiece at half time. And that ball has been cut out this time by Richie McCarthy, superb during the opening 35 minutes. This time Wayne McNamara, and McNamara up here as far as Conor Allis. UCD student Dallas goes after this, back in his own 65 metre line, trying to spoon it outside here to the waiting Paul Brown. Did well to get away from Daniel Carney. Over across as far as James Ryan, a more expansive game now being played by Limerick, and it all ends up with a magnificent shot by Ryan that's fired over the bar. The former footballer, now very much the prominent number 11 hurler, has got a third point in this monster final. And the Limerick hurling fans are loving every second of it. They lead by five. Yeah, Jared, that's an incredible score. He must have been 90 yards out, you know, on the angle. Probably the wrong option, but went right. But it's one of those days. The wind is picking up out there. You can feel it up here, even. Nice breeze, and Limerick have it behind him now. And Cork really need a goal, I'd say, at this stage to get the back into the game. They've got Seamus Harnady attacking, looking for a score. He'll settle for a point. He gets one, and that's a third one for Seamus Harnady. And that's uh, Cork's first point from play in the second half. The other two points, of course, had come from Jamie Coleman freeze. So now it's 17 points to 13. More changes being made. We're about to see another big man come in, and this is number 26 for Cork, Michael Cusson. Six foot six, six foot seven, take your pick. He's a giant of a man anyway, comes in in place of Luke O'Farrell. And I wonder whether this will mean a change of direction now, because with that kind of height and that kind of physique, you imagine the direct ball in might well be the, the one they will target. Yeah, absolutely, Joe. that's going to be it now. Basically, get the ball and feed it in long and hope to maybe get a break or two off there. There's only four points in it, and Hurling that can change around very, very quickly. And, you know, Limerick have those couple of other options on the bench still. Maybe, maybe like some Niall Moore and Kevin Downs still maybe to come in there into a forward line. They're incredible subs to have, um, you know, to have subs that would maybe make a lot of inter-county teams and they're not in the game yet. So, very warm. See the ref taking on a lot of water out there as well. John Allen looking on here as Paulie O'Brien, his wing back, is uh, in need of attention. He's been getting attention now for uh, over 40 seconds, I would think. And I think John Allen is just wondering whether or not the number eight, number five, can uh, continue. And it looks like we're going to see uh, Cahal King coming in, played in the semi final. Not in just yet. Uh, you can imagine Shemasiki being an option back there as well. Loads of experience playing at wing back and cornerback. 
as this uh, ball is put deep into the corner at half once again. Once more, it's James Ryan getting a lot of opportunities, firing this one to the left, however, in front of an attendance of 42,730, which means it's the biggest monster final attendance since, uh, well, about four years ago, also here in Limerick East against Clare. Cork come back, they need scores. They're four behind. Carney inside. And as far as Lorcan McLaughlin has to go this way and that before swinging his stick and putting it wide. And this opportunity is never going to be easy. Seamus Harmony went to him immediately and said, hard luck, keep it going. And Cork will continue to play with spirit and determination, if you can be certain of that. But Limerick hold all the aces at this stage and with 21 minutes gone in the second half. And there's the scoring opportunities created. And of course, they're 13 out of 29, you know, that's really miserable and you know, they've had a lot of wides, maybe around 14 wides at this stage of the game. And you know, they're well on top. You know, they're taking even half of those chances to be well in this game. But now they're battling to get it out of their own defence. It's Conor O'Sullivan, high up into the air, 1-2, work for here for Pat Cronin, knocking it down, intended for Lorca on the block. But it's three against two, the numerical advantage of Limerick is certainly paying off. You remember it was ten points apiece at half-time, Cork had the better of things by and large during the first half, but hit a lot of wides, think about ten wides during that first half, but then the sending off of Patrick Horgan looks like it has been one of the significant moves of the game. One of the significant moves right now has been made by Cahal Nocton, and he hits it high and he puts it over the bar, and he's got a first point. And now it's 17 points down once again to within manageable distance at 17-14. Yeah, Three between them. Great score there by Cahal Nocton, lovely dummy hand pass there, went around his man off the hurl over the bar. Yeah, Cork really credit the Cork during the last couple of scores there, keep them back in the game, Seamus Harnady scored his third point for play. There's Cahal King going on, the player coming off as the wing back, Paddy O'Brien who was injured a few minutes ago, and I think John Allen has decided it's time to freshen things up. On a yeah. steaming hot day like this, sensible tactics. And I think Don Legretti going back, wing back there now, and Cahal King coming into the middle of the field. Nicky Quaid's puck out, big, huge one over there, intended for Hannon, comes back here instead to Cork and to Tom Kenny in particular. Back down along the line towards Seamus Harnett, he couldn't keep the ball in play, line ball to Limerick. Approaching 58 minutes, 12 minutes to go here, Limerick by three. Very, very warm conditions, up around 26, 27 degrees, I would imagine, again today. With a cooling breeze, making life uh, more bearable. This right ball is going to be hit in by Gavin O'Mahony. 26 year old from Kilmallock. Coming down to that, his club coach. County champions. Up it goes. Up there, dropped down there by Dowling this time. Recovered well, and Cork's Christopher Joyce hits it. This time beyond the Hulmachton. Runs on towards Pat Brockhart-Prona. Dermot Donald already lost his stick. Cronin had his and availed of the opening to put it over and a third point for Cronin, another for Cork. The fight back continues and the 14 men are now within two points of Limerick. Yeah, and Jerry, you have to say a great score by Pat Cronin in the middle of the field, but Don already looked out on his feet there. And Cork players seem to be, you know, again, re-energised. They're picking up a lot of the breaking ball again and, and they're doing very, very well. And as I said earlier, if they're taking some of their chances, you know, they'll be leading in this game now. So. You have to credit 14 men since half time, and they're, they're putting in a huge effort here in the second half. Stephen White's on in the middle of the field in place of uh, number eight, Rockwell McLaughlin. Ball come back again, and it's Stephen White with his first taste of the ball, that first touch. All the way down as far as Richie McCarthy, trying to get Cusson into it, Cusson fouled, three out. That's the one thing that Cork uh, do not want to do, give away freeze to Limerick, which will put the pressure right back on their defence again. But he's, uh, Arm and stick came around McCarthy there. He was having another storming match for Limerick. What a performer at number three. This free to be taken by Gavin Amani. Great striker of the ball. Remember the eight points he got against uh, Dublin in the All Ireland quarter final a few years ago? This time the free taken from a deep position. Aim towards Ryan. McDonald comes out for it. Ryan goes after him. Hickey gets there first. Shortens the grip on the stick and fires it over the bar. That's a very valuable score by Seamus Hickey. It's only his seventh ever championship point. First today, ten minutes to go, three between them again in a thrilling monster final in Limerick. Yeah, Jaron, that's a very, very important score. You know, Cork got the last couple of scores and Limerick really needed a score. And there's a puck out gone straight out over the line. It's a fumble by William Egan. It was aimed at him by Anthony Nash. The left half didn't take it, lapse in concentration. 
So now Limerick can take possession, can take their time as well, and can pile on the agony. John Allen, who has done so much for a hurling in this country and uh, who masterminded all Ireland's successes for Cork and monster successes, now on the verge of leading Limerick to a monster title and a place in the semi-finals would be some achievement. This to be taken by Declan Hannon. Yeah, John, well kept to put this over the bar, very good at ease. Oh, he's got it beautifully, will it curl, will it curl, he has! How about that? An eighth point, this one from the sideline. Brilliant strike. Just watch the left hand up right here. The ball's in the air and it, oh yes, just inside. No need for Hawkeye. It's nineteen fifty. And he got from the world because of that. Beautiful. Right on the right. Once again it's picked up by Seamus Hickey. Hickey takes off. Collins after him. Can't get to him. Hickey's playing like a man inspired in this final. Back to Paul Brown and Brown shoots it. And Limerick are finding that everything's almost going over the bar at this stage. That one stopped, however, and it comes to Conor O'Sullivan. The intervention of Nash was important there. Comes out here towards Tom Kenny. Needs to get it under control. Eight minutes to go in this final. Limerick leading by four. They come again with Gavin O'Mahony. The left half back. Tearing forward here. And it takes a fast one to beat Cahill Nocton. Nocton got back on his stick in. But just a moment ago, Nash here was in some difficulty when that ball was hit in high. And this is what happened. Yeah, it was Paul Brown. It looked like it was going over, but he brought it down. And Connor sold in very quickly there to clear the danger. It was Declan Hannon out from the other side of the field, nearly in the very same position. Eight points so far in the match. I don't think he'll get this one. <laughs> if, if, if he does it, will you do my lottery numbers as well? <laughs> well? He's got the last one from the other wing, and this one he puts to the left, you're right. Stays at 19 points to 15. Seven and a half minutes are left in the final, plus the usual one or two minutes to be added on. Intensive mood, JVM. Anthony Nash's puck out. It was aimed towards Carney, but it comes back to William Egan. William Egan, who saw that uh, ball drift, trickle out over the sideline a few minutes ago, this time sends it in dangerously. Hassan was appealing for it. So too was the played in the end. The umpire says harmlessly wide. Nobody able to make sufficient contact on it. Missed them all, apparently. Yeah, dangerous ball, but I think you're going to see Cork resort to Route 1 now for the last few minutes. There's no point having Michael Cousin in there unless they do that, but there's two men in there marking him. They have to try and get a goal chance. Once again, it is McDonald pursuing the corner forward here, who is Shamie Tobin and uh, Shawnee Tobin unable to get it under sufficient control. Ends up being in court possession. A chance for them to launch it down the field once again. They're going to be the goalkeeper out to take this one. Sure, there'll be lots on your mind after this particular match. Don't forget to Damien O'Reilly's program on RT Radio One tonight. Take your point just after six. Anything you have to say about the game? The mention of game. There's game on 2FM every night next week. Great program of sport. Great match here in Limerick. Limerick defending and defending strongly. And it comes out to the captain Donald O'Grady. Given his debut against Cork back in 2004 when Pancho Wheelahan was the manager that time. Right now, Don O'Grady has managed the side and he's watching Shane Dowling come in, advance with Menace and put it over the bar. The second point for Shane Dowling, the wonderful young, talented hurler, has come off the bench to put five between them with five minutes left. Yeah, Jerry's very strong and Jerry did the right thing, put the five points up, put a goal on there, all he did was flick it inside. But at this stage, no Limerick, no five points is a big lead with, with Cork only with 14 men. And Kevin Downs is now coming on in place of Shawnee Tobin. And Michael, when you think about all the subs that were at John, Ke uh, that John uh, Alan, Alan had at his disposal today, it's a very, very talented-looking bench. And that one has been left behind inexplicably to Kevin Downs. Oh, a horrible mistake. And that's got over the bar by Downs. He could scarcely believe it. Christmas come in the month of July. Yeah, and Jared, you know, we talked about this before the game, but like likes of Sean and Tobin, Graham McKay, very pacey, used their pace early, stretched lads, and then to bring on the likes of Graham, uh, of Kevin Downs and Shane Dowling, you know, big strong men, Conor Alice, to win possession and finish the game. Dangerous ball in here now. This is the one, inside towards Cusson, couldn't grab it, however, 
outmaneuvered, outmuscled, and away in the end, out of danger for Limerick. Cork trying to get it back again. Four and a half minutes are left, but they are six points behind. That's back in again by Daniel Carney. Not to try to regain it for Cork, and this time the referee saw a foul. Limerick there goes down. Three out to Limerick. Clench fists all around. Man on the deck there, Donald O'Grady. From Granada, Ballon Gary. And the end result is going to be a free out of danger. Zarel down to get a start. Off the ball, just a bit of pushing each other. The crowd are getting very excited now, Jared. They know the well, Limerick within touching distance now of the first uh, Munster Championship since 1996. We are bridging a gap of 17 years. The referee goes in. The atmosphere is incredible now. And the Limerick players out on their feet, a lot of them. Two Paul Brown, Donald already men that have covered huge ground. They played superbly in the second half, Limerick, but they've had the advantage of one extra man for all of the 35 minutes, or uh, as it is. 13-1, 32 so far. This is what was happening behind the referee's back here. Not very pleasant, Kevin Brown, not terribly edifying. Both of them will get a dish out of cards. So the referee, who's already uh, dished out yellow cards and one red. Yeah, and it's going to be a big talking point, Jerry. You know, Pat Horgan under that high ball. You asked me before half-time what I thought. I knew the ball had struck. Uh, the ball side the freeze on the way in there and it's taken by Joyce and Christopher Joyce gets it back out again across the field by William Egan Cork zigzagging it down with Carney now all the way down towards his club mate that Sars Michael Cusson couldn't quite reach it but Michael Cusson comes out has it under control pursued by two Limerick players makes an angle and puts the ball wide Disappointing finish there for Michael Cusson, who's waited patiently to get his big chance to come on in this Munster final. But now we're almost at 68 minutes, two to go, and Limerick are almost there, going for their 19th ever Munster title. Another change, and this change here involves uh, the Limerick man, and that's Niall Molan. We'll see him very shortly. It'd be fitting if he were to come on and share in the big glory day. He's done so much in the past for Limerick Merlin, and so will the Molan family. This is still in play by Paul Brown. Slips it down along into the corner here. Once again, Kevin Downs. And that is a beautiful shot. He jumps for joy, he punches the air. He's got a second. Two shots on the target, two points by a substitute who's only just on the park. Not half bad. Limerick 22, Paul 15. Yeah, but Jared Limerick players laying down a marker for the next day. Kevin Downs punching the air there. That's his second point. Shane Dowling with two points. You know, since coming on, and that's what Limerick game plan has been to introduce these key subs later on in the game to finish off. You know, what has been a very brave chance for Cork, considering they had 14 men and they had loads of chances that they didn't take throughout the game. The scores from play are interesting. Niall Moore in his arm, Seamus Hickey has been replaced for the last couple of minutes, having played his heart out. Niall Moore in for the last few minutes then of what is looking like a glorious afternoon for John Allen, the man who came after Don Grady from Cork to take up the manager's reign here in Limerick and now has guided them virtually to a monster title in his second year here and there's another one and that's Shane Dowling with a third superb play inspiring work there by Dowling well the manager's been able to bring these fellas off the bench and how they have relished the occasion 23-15 well, yeah, Jeremy, you mentioned Niall Moore there. Look what service he's given to Limerick over the years. And he's had great days and he's had poor days in the Limerick jersey, you'd have to say. And Ollie, his brother, there for so long, you know, maybe without getting over the line with the Munster Championship. So it's a great day for the Mourns and a great day for Limerick now. You know, they, you have to say they've been taken over completely in the last 15 minutes. It's 11 minutes since Cork scored. But then I think it was very hard on them. I also think that an eight point difference right now isn't fair on the effort that they put in overall in what has been a very good Munster final. But the scoreline doesn't lie, 23-15. And we've got Shane Dowling with the game almost into stoppage time. Two minutes of stoppage time to be played, and he's put that one wide. So it's another wide for Limerick, and that's 10 in all. Something to work on for them, no doubt. Well, Jerry Limerick is a passionate sporting county, as we all know, with the rugby and foot football and soccer, every other sport. But hurling is a huge game down here. I think we're going to see some pitch invasion after this game. It'll be like a throwback to the old days. 
certainly should be, and that's Niall Moran. Off he goes. Of course, he teaches an old school leash, and he's got a point, and he's putting over the bar. And that dreams off a wonderful day for him. Just perfection, really. Everything possible that could go right has gone right for Limerick. Everything that could go wrong for Cork has gone wrong for them. Yeah, but Jerry, you mentioned look, those subs have scored six points from play between them. And Kevin Downs has got two, and Shane Downing has got three, and Niall Moore got one. And that's, an, that's, a, that's a massive contribution. It's now a nine point advantage for Limerick. Seconds away, one minute to go. We now know the quarter final arrangements on July the 28th. It'll be Cork versus Kilkenny, it'll be Galway versus Clare. That now confirmed. Limerick are in the semi final of the All Irelands. They'll go there as, all, as a monster champions. And who knows, they may yet be All Ireland champions. Kevin Downs swinging it in there towards Declan Hannan. And they're playing ducks and drakes now at this stage with the crowd ready for the biggest invasion of this pitch there has been for decades. They're ready for the invasion. The players better get ready. The Gardaí are down there trying to do their best just to get us they're as far as the 70 they're second minute. Off the pitch, they're, not trying, they're not trying to stop them coming on when the final whistle goes. No, we just want to see the game yeah. finish. Yeah. No one, no one is going to stop them. 24-15. Well, it's uh, quite amazing. Limerick on home soil, a 16th monster title for them. The first coming. since 1996 when Tom Ryan was in charge. Well, this is John Allen and his team's big day. The Cork native who has guided Limerick. And it'll be Shane Dowling looking for his fourth point of the match. Up into the crowd. Not sure it went wide. It's all over. Limerick are the monster champions 2013. And nobody but nobody can take it away from them. John Allen has masterminded a wonderful victory on Shannon's side. They've waited some 17 years. It's a proud sporting city, as you've mentioned, Michael. Great for rugby, great for everything. It's so many facilities here. But look at this setting here. It is spectacular. They've waited so long. Cork, congratulate John Allen who as manager, remember, took up the cudgel as manager of Cork in 2005, which I thought was a very brave thing at the time, because Donal O'Grady had won the All-Ireland the previous year, beating Gilkenny by uh, whatever it was in the 2004 final. And then he came along and took up the challenge of winning in 2005. And I'm sure people said to him, you're mad, you're crazy, can't be done. You can't emulate what he's already well, done before you. But he's a man who loves a challenge, and he showed us today just what he's able to produce. And here in the Gaelic ground, in Limerick it has been a very very worthy success for Limerick the final score here for the record it's Limerick 14 it's Limerick 24 points Cork 15 nine between them Michael yeah. the sending off before half time is that the big moment well it was a big moment but at the end of the day you can't take away from Limerick's fantastic win but it was huge at the time you know Pat Horgan was in behind he did he did slap across the back of the head uh, the referee was close by. He thought it was a red card. I thought it was very harsh, but a fantastic look at his look at look at his scenes out on the pitch. You know, hurling is made to go around. The big championships, the big wins, the monster championships of Ireland. We see, and this has been the most brilliant hurling championship so far. And this caps it maybe again today. It's brilliant for hurling. It's like the nineties all over again. And well done to Limerick. Well done to Limerick indeed. Te tears in the eyes of some of the fans, leaping for joy. What a setting. Yes, it's Robert Frost who is the chairman of the Munster Council with his uh, cupola fuckle just before the presentation is going to be made to Donal O'Grady. I would also like to thank our sponsors for that generous sponsorship of our championship here today. Isn't it uh, amazing that when you think about it, the two teams who competed in the Division 1B final back on that night in April when everybody said they're only 1B, they're now champions! It's Limerick who are Munster champions, Donald O'Grady lifting the Munster Cup, champions for 2013. Just like Dublin are Leinster champions, this is an amazing scene, an amazing setting, a day of joy for everybody in Limerick, a great day for hurling, a great day to be here. What a joy to be part of this sport and everybody having fun and having the day of their lives. 
young and old, they'll always remember this day. And the great thing is, there's another two months of this championship still to go. Who will be holding the McCarthy Cup? Right now, Limerick don't care. Here's Donald O'Grady. Chairman of the Munster Council, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's been 16 years since the Munster Cup was in Limerick hands, but finally, today is the day it comes back home. Just a few thank yous. Uh, I'd like to thank our backroom team, our Hurley carriers, Jerry, John, Joe Hannon, all the boys, the, the selectors, lads, Donnick O'Donnell, our coach, John Kiley, Eamon Meskell, Mark Lyons. Superb job done with us, lads. We could have lasted another 20 minutes. Well done. There's one man who today, I think, was an awkward enough day for him. He had a Limerick jersey on his back for the last two years. And John, you plotted the downfall of the Rebels today, so thank you. To our sponsors, JP and Noreen, it's just, it's unbelievable to have you backing us. When JP is involved with us, there's always that sense of belief and hope that we can stand here and lift the Munster Cup. And I think JP, our gratitude goes out to you. You're an outstanding man, and thank you very much. To the county board, to the county board, another crowd that have been outstanding and backed us from start to finish. Inter-county hurling lads has taken on a new lease of life. The commitment involved now is frightening and there's a lot of expense involved. So to the county board, there was no, nothing left spared lads and we got a reward today. So thank you very much. To Jimmy Barry Murphy, Patrick Cronin, and the Cork boys. Today is tough coming down to Limerick. Lads, you're not out of the competition. You made us earn it, even though we're down to 14. You pushed us all the way. There's a kick in you, lads, and you'll never know the way the championship has gone. Limerick and Cork could be in the All Ireland final. So thank you very much for a sporting game. And finally, to the great bunch of supporters that we have. We've had some tough years, lads, but you have to lose them to win them. The hunger that was there at Limerick today, I knew and we knew we would not be beaten. So thank you to everyone for making it a great occasion. Limerick, kaboom!